Please welcome Fine Gael leader, Enda Kenny. How are you? Great. You came up from the Fine Gael, Young Fine Gael Conference? Yeah, Young Fine Gael had their summer school in Tremor in the Grand Hotel. I was down there last night. Actually, I was in four constituencies yesterday before I went down to Waterford. So I came back up this morning. Not much sign of oxygen on the, uh, on the road outside Nace. <laughs> A lot of in rain. Intented. But listen, you have emerged mm. the winner, but it must have been a very bruising few weeks. And I want to try and take you through that personal journey in a sense of what's that like. When did you first know that there was this really serious leadership challenge? It's not actually about winners. Uh, and I'm not going to go into the details of what we discussed, obviously, internally within the party. It was a matter of, uh, of preference, and I was very happy that the party uh, endorsed that very strongly. And we moved to a new place and a new agenda, and that's uh, focusing on the next election. And that's a real politician's answer to my but question. He didn't answer it. <laughs> it's also, it's also, it's also a, an answer that I, you know, I have to give, yeah. uh, both as a, as, as, as a man, as a politician, as the leader of the party. Uh, we have rules and regulations, and we follow those. In the case of uh, sort of the, the personal impact upon me, when you go into politics, it is an uncertain vocation. It's like life; you never know what's going to happen. Uh, but you have to have a sense of, you know self-belief and conviction about what you stand for and the values that you want to bring to politics. And sometimes they're, um, they're tested. And, uh, but when did you few... know that Richard was going to challenge you? Well, it wasn't a case of knowing when a challenge might come. It was a case of, of my ringing Richard and saying, look, we need to sort this out. That's when you went to see him, of course. No, well, I, we spoke on the phone a few times first because uh, I've been friends with Richard for, for over 20 years. And, you know, you can have differences of opinion in any team, uh, as we had. But that's sorted out and we move on. But was it when you drove up to see him that he more or less said he was going to? Because no, I love the historical no, detail. It is interesting. Well, we won't go through the detail of it, but he'd already told me. Mm. Uh, so I, I said, well, I, I have a duty and a responsibility to sit down with you and talk about this, which we did. And uh, I decided on the Monday to bring it to a conclusion and bring it to a head. To because you couldn't, you, couldn't, you, you couldn't drift on with uh, uncertainty and confusion about an issue like this because it's far too important. And it's not just about me as the individual. It is about the political party and, and the philosophy that you stand for and giving sort of credibility and trust to what you believe in. Yeah, and I accept so, that, but the moment, mm -hmm. obviously, the big moment, and even I was surprised by it, by it and you took a lot of people by surprise. When did you decide to fire him? Um, well, I decided to relieve him of his duties on the Monday. <laughs> what was it like? No, a moment? Uh, uh, did you no. wake up and say, no, no, no I'm firing him? No, I had already moved a motion of no confidence in the Taoiseach arising from the, from, from the two banking reports, which indicated that 75% of our problems were caused by mismanagement at home. And I really, I, to be quite honest with you, I said, look, I can't go down to the door tomorrow and move a motion of no confidence unless I have the same from, from, my, own, from my own people. What's it like, though? I was thinking that, because we were covering it on prime time, but mm -hmm. what is it like when you are the subject of a challenge like that, genuinely, even for your home, for your family, for yeah. your... What is that like? Well, first of all, I mean, uh, Finula's a, a wonder here. She understands the mechanics of politics really well. Uh, one of our children was in, in the Gaeltacht uh, as a cannery in a, in, in a house of uh, students. The other was, the second was doing the uh, junior cert, and uh, the third fellow was in the Gaeltacht as well. But children see things differently, because the young man doing the junior cert said, well, all this pressure might mean that I mightn't have to do as well in my exam as I would normally be expected to do. Um, that was a silver lining. <laughs> yeah, so from the point of view, point of, view of, of, of the human reaction here, this is a stressful period in anybody's life. Uh, and very few have been leaders of opposition without either being Taoiseach or having some discontent on the, on, on the benches. Did you think you'd lose it? No, I never felt I'd lose it. But in the end, and it was I, narrow. I, I, I know we'll never, people talk about six votes, but we never know how close it will be. But you had to rely on the party only, at the end, there didn't There are only you? two people who know that answer, and, mm. and they will bring that to the, to the, away with them uh, out of this mortal <laughs> so world. Great. But the, the, the point is that it was about an issue of preference, because even those who didn't agree with me, uh, said publicly, even before the vote, that nobody 
could have done the extent of, of work and commitment and energy that I put into building up the party since Absolutely. 2002. And my point and my self-belief is that I know I can finish this project from Fine Gael's perspective and make us the largest party in the next all. And this is... The, uh, somebody would say to me, why do you want this job? given that there's an Everest of debt facing the country and unemployment at the level that it's at and unprecedented problems of that nature. Uh, I believe deep down that the, the plan and the strategy that we have will not just offer hope to people, but will demonstrate that you can actually okay. move the country forward. I'm going forward. back to you, because tonight yeah. I'm interested in you. And, OK, you won the party, you won that vote. Mm. But the problem is, isn't it, and you know this better than even yourself, is... You haven't won the people, because I know polls, we can list them mm -hmm. endlessly. But what's it like for poll after poll to well, tell you the people of Ireland yeah, but don't poll, think you're people material? Poll after poll, uh, 25 or 27 polls, for what they're worth, indicated that the, the Fine Gael party was the, was the most popular party in the country. I remember Mary Harney often saying when uh, she was at 60, 65%, the party was at 4. What about you, Andrew? I'm more I interested. This is a, I yes. know, but in a sense, okay. you are the leader. And what I'm saying to you is, and I mean, everyone says you're a really nice guy, but mm -hmm. poll after poll, the Irish people say they don't think they want you. Actually, they're saying they don't but, want you to be Taoiseach. But you see, you, you, can't prove, you can't prove your ability as Taoiseach from an opposition point of view. I uh, haven't been Taoiseach. Mm -hmm. I expect to be Taoiseach, and I'll demonstrate that I'll be the hardest working leader of a government in the history of the state. But I've got to wait to, have, to prove my credentials with the people before you can actually do that. It is very difficult to say. We've been leading uh, in polls for over two years from an opposition perspective, but you don't have the authority of Cabinet to actually lead the country. But shouldn't you really be right? I mean, Eamon Gilmore is riding high in the polls. Mm -hmm. You're not. Why do you think it is? Why do you think it well, is that the people don't yeah, get it from Traditionally you? in Ireland, let's say that 48, 50 percent of people voted Fianna Fáil. None of them were going to say that they would favour Andy Kenny uh, as the Fine Gael leader. And within that then you have other parties, the Labour Party uh, and other parties who make up the, the, the remainder. Now that's changed, obviously, because quite a deal of uh, Fianna Fáil people may well have trans, uh, you know, transmitted their, their support to other parties. But the, the point is uh, that f f from an opposition perspective, you cannot demonstrate your qualities as teacher because you don't have the okay, job. Okay, and I think that's a fair point. Well, I suppose the people who know you best, they mm -hmm. aren't the people in the polls, but they're your front bench. And nine of them very recently said they don't believe you're up to the job. And Richard Bruton, who was your economic spokesperson, mm -hmm. very respected, went on Sean O'Rourke during the heave mm -hmm. and said you built up the party brilliantly yeah. but that you're not on top of the economic portfolio. And at a time like this in Ireland, gee, we need that. I don't accept that at all. I never did. In fact, in times of, of political you know, um, disagreement, people often say things, as, as Richard himself has said. But the point about political leadership is that look at where all the academics and the economists brought us facing a mountain of debt. The point about political leadership is that you actually make sound judgments but the in the interest of the people and the country. Enda. The problem is leave it close to your front bench. But they but don't within, think you've sound judgments But within, within, within our political party, the rules that we follow are that the parliamentary party are the only ones entitled to make a judgment on leadership. The next leader of Fine Gael, many years hence, will be elected from an electoral college both councillors, supporters and members of the Oireachtas Party. In this case, the final arbiter is the parliamentary party and they endorsed my leadership very strongly. But and the I'm people leading who on felt that. that end, I suppose, a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. they must feel the same way. I mean, obviously they're towing the line now, maybe not, not John really, D.C. today there isn't, and there isn't, uh, on Tuesday. There isn't, there? Uh, there isn't uh, you know, a team in the country that doesn't have disagreements uh, or dissent within its ranks at some time. When I was elected leader in 2002, the first thing I did after that contest was to appoint the three contenders for that position to the front bench. And I said before this vote that I would put people back on the front bench because I believe in their respective qualities. And they've accepted that and we're now focused on a different agenda, a different place, and that's contesting and winning the next general election and putting our plans and our strategies into place.